We are here with uh, Semyon Franklin, and uh, he is going to t uh, tell us about uh, is uh, Python newbie friendly. Thanks. Um, okay, so yeah, I'm Simeon Franklin. I'm a Python instructor for Maracana. Uh, my title is Python beginner friendly. Um, it's kind of an obvious question to which most people answer, yes, Python's an awesome language and Python is beginner friendly. And uh, I put the paper together out of frustration, actually. Um, not my frustration, but the frustration of people that I talk to. Uh, in the last year, I've talked to something approaching like a thousand developers who are new to Python, um, mostly training them uh, to use Python or, or maybe to write websites with Django. And uh, I heard sort of the same stories, the same kinds of frustrations, um, the same roadblocks encountered kind of repeatedly, so I thought I'd give voice uh, to some of their frustration a little bit. Um, Python as a language, like as a syntax, it's, it's newbie friendly because it has this gorgeous learning curve, right? You invest just a little bit of effort into learning a new feature and you get power right away. You can, you can do cool stuff right away. You can um, write useful scripts without even knowing functions. Um, so as a syntax, Python is totally user friendly, but uh, I struggle with how to describe this, but the, the infrastructure, the tools, like kind of the community knowledge needed to use Python effectively, there's this big like initial hump. You have to spend a lot of time figuring things out and you bump into a lot of um, poor user experiences along the way. Uh, and when you get over the, the hill, it's totally worth it in my estimation. I just like to see if we could remove the hump a little bit. Um, the Zen of Python, you know, there should be one and preferably only one obvious way to do things. That's awesome. And it mostly applies to the language, and that's awesome too. But we should apply it to more than just the language. Um, I have I have kind of a logo down here with a bunch of questions, and I'm not going to have like the camera zoom in. But like these are the these are the questions I hear from people. Uh, how do I get? You know, I, I wrote some Python code. How do I get in the path? What are these egg files? What are these PTH files? How do I how do I install other Python software? What's easy install? Why don't I have it on on Windows? Um, uh, what's the difference between setup tools and distribute and distutils? And, and and a lot of the questions are around you know the packaging and installation uh, area, but there are poor user experiences of a variety of places. I put um, two user stories. Um, the names are changed to protect the uh, to protect the innocent, and they're composite stories, but they're true stories about people who are smart and who explored Python and then gave it up because it was too much of a pain in the neck for a variety of reasons. Um, and, and, and some of those other reasons, not just the packaging situation, uh, idle is a lot of people's first exposure to Python and idle has all sorts of really poor user experiences. Uh, the, the standard lib uh, annoys even experienced developers sometimes and explaining to a beginner uh, you know how you use URL, URL lib2, HTTP lib and, and so on. Um, uh, the help, Python documentation is awesome if you know what you want and where it is already. But I challenge you to look at um, look at these things with like a beginner mind. If you didn't know anything at all, how would you figure out? You know, go to the Python website, click on documentation, um, or use the interactive help. How would you figure out how to write an if statement? Um, at the the built-in help. Uh, doc strings are a killer language feature. Python can be self-documenting, and that's awesome. But again, use a beginner mind. Look at the doc strings on the built-ins. Uh, the only people who really need those are people who are new to the language. And uh, I challenge you to use a beginner mind and look at, look at zip, tell me what it does. Look at uh, sorted and tell me how you'd use it if you didn't already know. Um, I have some suggestions about what, what to do. Um, and, and I should say before any suggestions, I think it's awesome. Actually, there are a ton of really encouraging signs along these lines. Part of my frustration is I'm stuck with Python 2 at the moment and frequently on Windows. Python 3.3 rocked the Windows platform. New, new Windows launcher is awesome. How do you suggest to, to uh, fight with this complexity? Um, uh, so one thing is that, is that we're moving in the right direction, like the whole packaging situation. You know, set up tools and distribute are merging. Yay. Uh, documentation, if you look at the change log for Python 3.3, um, there's all these you know, previously undocumented function acquired documentation, or undocumented module, eTree got uh, a doc string. Um, so, so there's some positive movement, but uh, one way to rephrase that like Zen of Python thing is from the Apple Human Interface Guideline, and uh, it says, make usage easy and obvious, and we should just rigorously apply that you know, to the infrastructure, to the ecosystem, to the tools, to the, to the website, to the built-in help, more than just to the syntax of the language itself. And uh, poster sessions, I understand, are intended to like provoke conversation. I hope that I am. So come talk to me about it. And uh, PyCon has been awesome. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Simeon. Thank you.